Nigeria has installed Joseph Boakai as the new president at a ceremony today in the capital, Monrovia. He takes over from George Weah, who he defeated in the November runoff presidential election. Political observers say expectations are high for the new president to keep his promise to unite the country, improve living standards, weed out corruption and create jobs for the youth. For more reaction and expectations of the incoming president and his administration, I reach reporter Denise Nipson in the Liberian capital, Monrovia. His major message today, President Boakai spoke on the issue of rule of law, and he said that it won't be on business as usual, that the broken system and all of those issues that Liberians are confronted with will be handled as it relates to the growth and development of the country. He also spoke on the issue of unity, that Liberians to unite that election is over. Now it is time for Liberians to work in the interest of um, their nation. He also spoke about the issue of drugs as it relates to the youth involvement in illicit drugs, the intake of illicit drugs. So he stressed the need to work on that. He also stressed the need of education the health system, and the economy. How was the atmosphere during the swearing-in ceremony as well as when he delivered the speech? How was he accepted? So the swearing-in ceremony was full of excitement um, as it relates to those who are even attending the program um, were excited in terms of his induction, taking in the oath to become as the president of Liberia. There was a moment um, that the ceremony came to a standstill because the president could not continue with his speech. He had a call up point um, at some point in time where they, they had to call for um, water, they had to call for, for breeze um, to ensure that he can, you know, rest a bit. So the entire program, I can say, it did not go the normal way. It was disrupted because of the president's um, ability or not to continue the speech that was waiting. What is the reaction about it? People are worried, um, looking at the way in which he was caught up in terms of the delivery of his speech, and they have to go and rush on him to ensure that he received, you know, um, ventilation and energy to continue. They had to putting on the seat to sit and all of that. So some Liberians now are talking uh, in their own um, gathering at the moment that uh, perhaps what has been said is what has been witnessed. Others are saying that the speech was so long, it was too long for the president um, to, to, to have delivered that taking into consideration his age and taking into consideration what has been said there was a need that those who crafted the speech would have taken all of that into consideration to ensure that they have a shot of speech that he would have delivered to have the program, you know, going the way as usual, how it should have ended. Denise, I know a lot of uh, West African heads of state and government were present at the ceremony, but what are the expectations of Liberians after they chose him to take over from George Ria, who uh, handed over power. The expectation of Liberians who we spoke to um, with the issue of corruption, there's a concern to address the issue of corruption um, that has been for so long in the country Liberians have been talking about. Others also say that the issue of jobs, there are a lot of young people who are involved into the intake of illicit jobs um, ruining their future. Um, so like some Liberians are hopeful that the administration of President Boakai will ensure that they can work on the issue of illicit jobs that is uh, all part of the country now as it relates to the future of the young people. Others also said there's a need to ensure that the roles are rehabilitated, the roles are constructed to ensure that those who are in the rural areas can be able to trade, to have food sufficient in the country, to have the economy booming, and to ensure that there are jobs because there's, um, the issue of unemployment is of concern as well as Liberians have been speaking. And they have stressed the need to ensure that there can be employment for the youth and also elderly Liberians because 
vast majority of the youth are unemployed. So they are calling on, or their expectation is to ensure that those things are settled as this government takes um, seats. And also the issue of education and the broken down health system as well. These are things that Liberians have been talking about, their expectation to ensure that these things can be worked on as the Boaca administration takes on the leadership on today. That was reporter Denise Nipson speaking with me from the Liberian capital. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken embarks on a week-long tour of Africa's West Coast with the primary objective of sustaining U.S. influence in the face of strong competition from Beijing and Moscow, coupled with escalating instability in the Sahel region. Beginning his journey with a brief stopover in Cape Verde, Blinken's subsequent destinations include Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, and Angola. This marks his first visit to Sub-Saharan Africa in 10 months, occurring amid the dominant international focus on the Ukraine war and the Israel-Hamas conflict. Despite President Joe Biden's unfulfilled promise to visit Africa in 2023, Blinken's tour comes at a time of evolving political landscapes since his last visit to the region in March 2023. Notably, political changes in Niger, where Blinken previously supported elected President Mohamed Bazoum, have occurred following a military coup that ousted Bazoum. The new regime is diversifying its partnerships, including strengthening ties with Moscow and hosting French soldiers. Russia has expanded its influence in several French-speaking African countries, raising concerns about security in the Sahel, where jihadist groups continue to conduct attacks. In response to the unstoppable, to unstable Sahel situation, In response to the unstable Sahel situation, the United States is considering alternative locations for a drone base emphasizing stability in coastal countries. Anthony Blinken, West African visit aims to assist these countries comprehensively in strengthening their societies and combating the expanding terrorist threat in the Sahel. Arriving in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, where he plans to attend a decisive match in the African Cup of Nations, Blinken will commend the country's democratic consolidation since Alassane Kotala came to power in 2011. Cote d'Ivoire bordering Mali and Burkina Faso has successfully contained the jihadist threat, employing a multifaceted approach combining military responses with economic development. The Biden administration's 10-year plan announced last year focused on promoting stability and preventing conflict in coastal countries such as Benin, Ghana, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire and Togo, departing from a security-centric approach. In Cape Verde, Blinken's initial stop, the United States has praised the democratic stability of the Portuguese-speaking archipelago. The U.S. has contributed around U.S. dollar 150 million through various programs, including the expansion of the capital's port, road improvements, and enhancements to the drinking water distribution system, with a third aid program currently under consideration. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.
something from the